Hey everybody, I'm Shauna and welcome back to my channel, Shauna Missy Me HD, a self-improvement channel that strives to inform, encourage, and motivate viewers to start their journey in living and creating their best life. And today I'm going to talk about becoming a doctor as a minority and specifically I'm going to answer the questions that were asked on my TikTok by my TikTok followers. If you are not following me on TikTok, it's totally fine. If you're interested in just becoming a doctor, then this video is still relevant for you, especially if you're a high school student right now or a college freshman, sophomore, even junior, and you're thinking about switching into a different field, the field of medicine. <laughs> this video should be very helpful for you. Uh, don't get me started. So if you didn't watch my previous video, go check that one out. Uh, it talks about some things to focus on as a minority when trying to become a doctor. So the most frequently asked question that I saw was, oh my God, how long did it take? You know, and so basically in order to become a doctor, you have to go into this with the mindset of knowing that it's going to be a long journey. Um, you don't want a doctor taking care of you who doesn't know what they're doing, right? So it's a lot of training and a lot of learning that comes along with becoming a doctor. So expect to be in school or in some type of training structure for a very long time. So basically from high school, I graduated at the age of 18. When I went to college, I did four years of college and then I did four years of medical school. And to be an anesthesiologist, you have to do four years of residency. So that's 12 total years for me. If I want to go straight from high school, straight into residency and complete it, it'll be 12 years to be an anesthesiologist at the minimum. If you want to be a different type of doctor, then how long it takes actually is going to be different. Um, at the minimum, I think you can probably get through undergrad, med school, and residency maybe in 10 years if you graduate college extremely early or you participate in some type of early high school, college, med school combined program or something like that. Um, if you do all your schooling here in America, the minimum is like 11 and then um, it could go literally up to 15, 16 years, depending on what type of doctor you want to be. So with that being said, another question that I got was, how old are you? Because I know it takes a long time to become a doctor. And yes, you are correct. It takes a very long time and I'm 28. So I have been dealing with this since 18 and I'm still not done because I'm in residency now. But I will say this, the time flies by. I still feel like I had a pretty, pretty good, uh, fun and enjoyable college time. Med school wasn't that easy to incorporate social life, but um, I did have a social life. I just had to compromise and sacrifice a little bit. But hey, what's worth having if you don't have to actually sacrifice and give something for it? Now that I'm in residency, I've already pretty much completed my first year. So I got three more years left. Um, I actually start to see the light at the end of the tunnel. I feel like I spent the last 10 years doing something that I'm very proud of. And even though it takes a long time and now I'm 28 and everything like that, um, I'm going to enjoy these bags end of the day. <laughs> Another common question was what school did I attend? So for undergrad, I went to Texas Southern University. It's in Houston, Texas. It is an HBCU. Shout out to all my HBCU followers and subscribers. Um, yeah, I had an awesome time. I loved it. I pledged, uh, I pledged AKA. <sighs> and I wouldn't trade it for the world. My school was not that competitive to get into. Um, not a lot of students actually go to med school coming from TSU, but there are some, hey, I actually, I know a few others, uh, but this just goes to show you that it doesn't really matter what undergrad you actually go to, you can get into medical school. You have to be realistic with yourself, be realistic with your application and apply to medical schools that are going to accept you. You don't wanna to apply to a school that has rigorous requirements and you're not coming from a rigorous undergrad. If you come from an average undergrad, you should be applying to average medical schools. End of the day, when you go to the doctor, do you ever ask your doctor what school they went to? Most likely not. So nobody really cares as long as you get a good education. And if you go anywhere here in America, you're going to get a good education. So it doesn't really matter. The med school that I went to is University of Texas Health Science Center at Houston slash 
McGovern Medical School. They changed the name while I was in medical school, like two years in. So I still call it UT Houston, but a lot of you guys may know it as McGovern Medical School. Uh, I went there for four years. I loved it. I had a blast. Another common question was, what do I need to do in high school? And my simplest answer is enjoy your life, enjoy your life, and enjoy your life. Uh, no, but honestly, you just need to, you know, whatever college you want to get into, make sure you have the GPA requirement for it. Make sure you have the SAT and or ACT score requirements for that college. Uh, again, make sure your resume is as juicy as you can make it. Whatever you participate in, find a way to put that on your resume. If you need letters of recommendation, go ahead and start asking those teachers to write one on your behalf. If you're not volunteering yet, find something to volunteer for. We are in the middle of COVID and there's not a lot that you can actually do right now. But when uh, all the stuff clears up and things kind of go back to a, another type of normal, then um, try to get some volunteer hours in. It never hurts. Even if you volunteer for things in the past, put that on your resume, find a way to make it relevant and make yourself look like a competitive applicant for the college that you're trying to get into. The only other thing I recommend uh, right now while you're in high school is to start teaching yourself how to critically think. Um, that's all med school is about. MCAT is about critical thinking. Step one, step two, step three. It's all about critical thinking. You have to know the basic knowledge, the basic science, of course, but you can know the basic science and not know how to critically think and you will do poorly on those exams. So studying a lot, being able to have a lot of mental capacity, being able to read things for hours at a time, being able to take information, absorb it, and actually you know, get something from it, start training your brain. And what I mean by critically think is to take things one step further. If I would have known that years ago, I would have done so much better and school would have been a lot smoother for me. I didn't develop good study habits until like I was already in med school. So I wish I had started developing good study habits in high school and good study habits in college and just challenging myself. Does your high school GPA matter for medical school? Short answer, no. Long answer, no <laughs> okay so gpa in high school only really matters for getting into the undergrad or college that you want to go to most medical schools are going to only pay attention to your college gpa your cumulative gpa as well as your science gpa that's what's important for medical schools what if i have a low college gpa so if you currently have a low college gpa and you are about to graduate or you're at the point to where you should be trying to apply to medical school, you will need to consider repeating some of your courses and maybe extending your education like another year or so. Because the only way to actually get your GPA up is to take a lot of more classes and make A's to kind of buffer out those bad grades or to just repeat those courses and get those grades off of there entirely. Now, will it be removed from your transcript? No. From what I understand and what I remember is that when you retake a course, your initial grade remains on your transcript, but that initial grade is no longer calculated into your new GPA. They will take the new grade from the repeat course and calculate it to give you a new GPA. So if you have D's and C's or F's or anything that's causing your GPA to kind of stay stagnant or not rise as quickly as you want it, you may need to repeat. But if you're a freshman and you have a low GPA, then you have a little bit more time to make A's, mostly A's, on the rest of your courses to get that GPA up. It is going to be a dogfight trying to get that GPA up because it's easy to drop your GPA, but it's very hard to bring it up. So you also may end up being that student who needs to go ahead and just retake that class that just has your GPA at a 2.5 or something like that. You know, you just need to retake the course and get a better grade. If you retake the course, do not waste your time. Do not waste your money by not making a better grade. And God forbid you make a worse grade. It's just a complete waste. So if you're gonna retake the course, make sure you're doing something differently that gives you different results, okay? And ideally, of course, an A or a B. So I don't have the best GPA, but they're okay. But what else can I do to improve my application? So if you're in college and you wanna improve your application for med school, I would first start with trying to volunteer at a hospital or any type of medical facility that you get on with. Um, if you can, it's a hospital, a nursing home, volunteer in some type of medical related facility. If you can't volunteer in a medical related facility, that is fine. Volunteer in anything else. 
And when you write your resume, you make it look like you were super involved and interested and you had leadership roles and you did it all the time and it's so near and dear to your heart because all medical schools want to see is that you're a well-rounded person, that you're not only at home studying to make the best grades, but you also like to help people. You like to give up your time to do things for others. You have hobbies. You, you, know, you know how to take a break and relax whenever things get stressful because they also don't want somebody that's going to wig out or go crazy in med school because they don't know how to cope with stress. So if you show that you have these hobbies, you like to volunteer, you like to say, okay, I'm not studying today. I'm going to go do this. Not too often, but often enough to keep you, you know, to keep your stress level down. Then that's what medical schools want to see. So volunteer if you can. All right. Also, if you can start research, do research. I suggest that everyone Go to all of your professors, ask them if they're doing any research projects and what you can do to become involved with them. Also, if you're at a school that has a graduate program, find graduates who are in the graduate program now, they're most likely working on a project. A lot of them may be your TAs or assistants to your professors or people who help you like in your labs. Ask them what they're doing. Ask them if you can get involved. And then, like I said, turn your hobbies into like skills, you know. So like I said in my previous video, I was a praise dance leader and it was something I did for fun. I loved it. I never saw it as like a real leadership role. But when it came time to kind of list my leadership skills on my resume, I definitely used that as, you know, I used that hobby as a leadership role because technically I was. And um, even if you're not the leader, but if you've taken any part and you were responsible for anything, it technically counts as a leadership role. The next question that I got that a lot of people asked was how hard is it and is it hard? So short answer, yes, it's hard. It's extremely hard and it's not the material that's hard, it's the amount of material that you have to know in such short time, you know. Think back to the, the last test you took. What do you actually remember from that last test? Probably not a whole lot because you just memorized it. In med school, it's totally different. You will not get far just memorizing things. You have to learn it. And you have to learn all of it because you don't know what you're going to be tested on. Plus, you want to be the best doctor you can be. So you want to be able to learn as much as you can. So that's what makes it hard. It's kind of like people like to say it's like college is like drinking from a water fountain and med school is like drinking from a fire hydrant. It's pretty damn accurate, okay? So uh, yes, it's hard, but I'm gonna release my next video where I talk about my particular challenges and some stuff that I actually had to go through uh, while I was going through this journey. So I hope this video was helpful to you guys. Again, shout out to all my TikTok followers. You guys are showing me so much love. It is unreal real but as long as you guys keep giving me that energy i'm gonna keep giving you the information if you want it dm me if you have any specific questions again if you are a texas high school student or a college freshman you need to be in my dms on instagram okay you need to be in my dms there is a special program in texas that you have to know about if you want to be a doctor